Thanks. Get seated, please. This lecture comes as our second inaugural lecture after the one which was very scintillating that had been given by Professor Miriam Kinyua. The professor is a very experienced professor. I want to request the 17 professors of this university to come over and introduce themselves. You just walk, come here, introduce yourself, and walk back. Please come over, those who are around. You come over. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm Professor Teresa Akenka, an associate professor, a full professor of chemistry in the School of Science, Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Thank you. I'm Professor Ruth Otunga. I'm a professor of education specialized in curriculum studies. You are all welcome. Good morning. I'm Professor Pius Kipkemboy, a professor of physical chemistry, Department of Chemistry and Bio Biochemistry, School of Science. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Professor Bonaventure Wanjala Kere, a professor of technology education in the School of Education. Welcome. I'm Professor Elmaria Uma, professor of agronomy in the Department of Seed, Crop, and Horticultural Sciences of the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology. Thank you. Um, I'm Professor Miriam Kinyua, uh, Professor of Plant Breeding and Biotechnology, uh, School of Agriculture. Karibuni sana. Good morning. I'm Professor Mgendi Momburi, Professor of Physics from the Department of Physics, School of Science. Welcome. I'm Professor Julia Sonyango Chuodo from the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology. I'm a Professor of Seed Science. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Lazai Chenyi, Professor of Wood Science in the Department of Forestry and Wood Science, School of Natural Resource Man Management. Welcome. Good morning. I am Professor George Dangasuk, a Professor of Plant Genetics in the Department of Biological Science, School of Science. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, professor John Smeal, uh, Professor of Education in Technology Education. Thank you very much. Morning, everyone. I'm Professor Caleb Utieno. I'm Salz, uh, Professor in Salt Science in the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology. You are welcome. Morning again. I'm Professor Frederick Wanjala, a professor of entomology, uh, Department of Biological Science, School of Science. And just to come is our guest professor. Good morning to you all. I'm Patrick Akliutz Kafu, Professor of Education in Teacher Education. Welcome. At this juncture, let me request the DVC A and F to just give a remark of welcome, invite the DVC ASA, give another remark of welcome, then give room to VC to give a final remark of uh, welcome and we go on. Chancellor, Ambassador Professor Judy Pahemuka, Chairman of Council, Dr. David Ojaka, University members of Council present, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Teresa Akenga, DVC, Academics and Student Affairs, members of University Management, members of the University Senate, distinguished guests, staff, students, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, delight I'm delighted to warmly welcome all of you to the University of Eldoret. This morning we are honored to be here to listen to the second inaugural lecture to be delivered by Professor Patrick Kafu, who is a professor of education, is also the Dean School of Education at the University of Eldoret. So we are all here as academic uh, colleagues, students, uh, family, friends, and the public to celebrate the intellectual and scholarly achievements of one of our distinguished professors. I believe this inaugural lecture is timely considering the numerous uh, changes that we have experienced uh, in, the, uh, in the Kenya education uh, sector in the recent past. 
This lecture reminds us of the words of the civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr., that the goal of true education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. With this in mind, I would like to welcome our Deputy Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, Professor Ruth Otunga, to make her remarks. Thank you all very much. God bless you. Ambassador Professor Bahaimuka, our Chair of Council, Dr. David Ojaka, our members of Council present, the Vice Chancellor, the University Management, professors of University of Eldred, academic staff, other staff of University of Eldred, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I welcome you all to this uh, very important occasion in the calendar of uh, University of Eldred, Feel at Home. University of Eldred, as uh, you may know, was awarded a charter on 11th February 2013. It is the largest of the, among the 15 uh, chartered universities in 2013. It has students who are taking diploma, undergraduate, postgraduate. So the presence of professors is very important in this university. Uh, this university offers some of the very unique programs supported by vibrant academic staff led by the professors who have introduced themselves. As you all know, uh, the university has about 17 professors, 15 males and two females. Of these professors, five have already given the inaugural lectures. They did so when this university was still attached to Moy University, and it was then a campus of Moy University. And one has given when we are fully fledged. Of those professors who have already given the inaugural lectures, uh, they include Professor Okalebo. I'm sure you uh, you may not I mean you you may not have seen him. He's one of those who didn't come. He was not feeling well. Professor Kalpil Hanna is also not present. Professor Bonaventure Kerre, you saw him. Professor Ruth Otunka has given an inaugural lecture. Professor Miriam Kinwa, who was the last one, and the first here at the University of Eldred. With the Professor Kafu delivering his inaugural lecture today, we have a balance of 13 lined up for this academic celebration. Madam Chancellor, we would like to inform you that during the 2015-2016 academic year, we lost one of our professors, full professors, uh, Professor Grace Mbagaya, God rest her soul in eternal peace. Professor Kafu has made history by being the first male professor to deliver an inaugural lecture at the University of Eldred. And on behalf of the academic division, I would like to congratulate him most sincerely for this bold step. You have done us proud, Professor Kafu. An inaugural lecture is a, a significant step in an academic's career at the university, any university. It provides an opportunity for a professor to inform colleagues, the university community, and the general public, the professor's work to date. Achievements, innovations, engagement, teaching activities, current research, and anticipated prospects. An inaugural lecture is a ceremonial occasion because it affords celebration of an important personal milestone with, with family, friends, colleagues of the professor, the university to recognize and showcase the academic achievements of its staff. Colleagues to hear about research that is going on around the university and it is an essential import, uh, uh, component of the university's public events program. I must assert that today is a very special day for University of Eldred, and I would like to once again congratulate Professor Kafu and welcome all of you to listen to him and enjoy what he has achieved so far to date. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Professor Kafu. We look forward.
Chancellor, our Chancellor, Professor Judith Mbula Bahemuka, our Chairman of Council, and Dr. David Ojeka, and members of the University Council present here, members of the University Management Board, members of the University Fraternity, my fellow professors, relatives and friends of Professor Kafu, ladies and gentlemen, and all protocols observed, good morning once again. Good morning. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of our students and faculty, it is a great honor and personal pleasure to welcome all of you here on the occasion of the second inaugural lecture. Thank you for joining us this day. Your presence here is not only to attend this inaugural lecture, but it is an expression of your interest and great support to the University of Eldoret. This places us on a solemn responsibility that we are determined to honor faithfully. It is my great pleasure to welcome everybody else at this lecture whose title is Unfulfilled Mission of Teacher Education Program in Modern Africa, the Kenyan Development Agenda Experience, to be presented by Professor Patrick Eclias Kafu, a professor from the School of Education. Madam Chancellor, inaugural lectures are a central part of a university's academic life. The event is normally held to commemorate inaugural lectures professors' appointments to full professorship. The lecture also enables University of Eldoret to showcase its academics and share its research with members of the wider university community and the general public in an accessible way. The lecture provides a platform for academic staff to present the body of research they have been focusing on during the career. Today, Professor Kafu is a, our good example as an outstanding scholar whose numerous written works and conference presentations attest to that. Similarly, he is, highly effect, is a highly effective teacher and his former students in this country and abroad can testify to that. I would like to commend Professor Kafu for the good work and the great contribution he has given to this University of Eldred ever since he joined this institution, and now the being the current dean of the School of Education. He has served in this position diligently and provided great leadership in the school. Let me also thank Professor Kafu's family for the support accorded to him during his academic journey. We know there are many challenges as we walk through this journey, but I'm sure the family stood by him celebrated with him and gave him the strategies to succeed. The support you gave him has brought him this far to this day that he is giving the inaugural lecture. Once again, I want to say congratulations to Prof and Karibuni to all of you. I now invite Professor Bonventure Kerry to come and read the citation of Professor Kafu. It's my pleasure to give you the citation of Professor Patrick Eclaus Kafu on the topic entitled The Unfulfilled Mission of Teacher Education Program in Modern Africa, the Kenyan Development Agenda Experience on this date of 8th June 2017. Professor Patrick Kafu was born in Transoya District on the White Hand Highlands on November of 11th, 1944. He is the son of the late Mr. Peter Cheumo Mangoli and late Mrs. Serafin Nasieku Messer. Patrick attended the following institutions First, East Sare, now Cherengani Primary School, Mill Hill Mission School of St. Augustine, Halaba Primary. He attended St. Peter's Intermediate and Secondary uh, School 
all level, Mumias, in the then North Nyanza district, now Kakamega, and St. Mary's Yala Pioneer A-level class in the then central Nyanza district, now Siaya. Thereafter, Patrick proceeded to Makerere University College to pursue the Bachelor's of Education degree in teacher education, and thereafter, at the University of Nairobi, he pursued a Master's of Education degree program in teacher education and the Doctor of Philosophy degree in teacher education as the pioneering class in Kenyatta University. Patrick is a career teacher, educator, trainer with experience of nearly 40 years. He has trained school teachers at primary and post-primary teacher preparation levels in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and besides, Patrick is a well-published scholar in education and specifically teacher education. He has published three books and over 80 articles in refereed journals. Further, Patrick has actively participated in the reviews and or reforms of education in Kenya and the Republic of Rwanda through the then Kenya Institute of Education, KIE, which is now KICD, Ministries of Education in Kenya and the Republic of Rwanda, UNESCO, which is the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, and the World Bank. Patrick has participated in the emerging reforms in teacher education program in Kenya and beyond. He has designed and developed teacher education specific programs and courses at the university level for undergraduate and postgraduate studies. He has also been instrumental in transforming teacher education from teacher training program to the present teacher preparation uh, program. Patrick is a staunch Catholic, married to Grace Namikoye Kafu, and has eight grown-up children, Cyprian Musombi and Elizabeth Nafula Kafu, both in the United States of America, Richard, Joyce, Bridget, Daniel, Catherine, and Metrin. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Patrick Eklaus Kafu. That's the man of the day. Thank you, and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, let us stand up and put our hands together for Professor Kafu as he comes forward to give us the second inaugural lecture. I have a few things which I want to share with you on this topic, which I think quite a number of us in our Mideast may be getting to know or to hear about it for the first time. So the topic is the unfulfilled mission of teacher education program. And the purpose of this presentation is one, to share experiences in the development and administration of the mission. The key word here is the mission of teacher education program for the development agenda of this continent. The second is to give an identity or recognition to this otherwise little known program of education in modern Africa. The third one is to create scholarly interest in teacher education program in modern Africa and beyond. To many people, teacher education program is a mystery. Now, the main concepts of interest, I'm not going to read it through. The first one is teacher educational program. In my presentation and my discussion with you, we are going to get what this means. The second uh, important concept is teacher training program, which I think all of you sitting in this room, you are familiar with. But this has been the undoing of Africa. Then the third one is the teacher preparation program which now is a departure from teacher training program. And then uh, 
we have teaching professor. And many people, chancellor in Kenya, claim that there's no such a thing like teaching profession. Through this interaction, you realize that teaching profession is a very critical uh, area in end development. Then um, we are also going to have the word society coming up here and there. What is a society? And uh, the critical thing about the society is the culture, which many African countries seem to have actually missed out. Then uh, we have another concept which we are going to come across in this presentation, skill manpower or professionals. Like all of you sitting here, you are actually professionals. And uh, in this interaction, you will know that you have your roots in teacher education program. And then uh, lastly, we have the development agenda. What is it? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what uh, we are going to go through. Now, the this focus or the scope of this lecture is actually seven areas. We are going to look at the context, the importance, the mission of the teacher education, challenges, uh, contributions, the proposals which I'm going to share with you in my own thinking, given the long experience I've had, and then the conclusion of the presentation. Now, you are all welcome to join me in the exploration journey of the above outlined areas of teacher education program for development agenda in modern Africa and especially in this country we call Kenya. Now, this journey is this journey is going to begin with the teacher education, then teaching profession then the society, and in this case, Kenya, then the professionals, who are these professionals in the Kenyan context, then the development agenda for Africa, and in the case of Kenya, what is it? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are going to share this morning. Now, contextualization of this program, that is in the context of Africa, and more so in Kenya. One is the teacher education program is actually very little known. It is the most misunderstood program of education, especially in Kenya. It is misplaced. That is why it is not effectively utilized in development. It is misconstrued and so on. And this actually has been established by those authorities. Number two is that teacher education uh, and especially ETC mission is actually a very much misperceived program in Africa and in Kenya. Now, the, the other one is that teacher education, actually in the form we are administering in Kenya, is foreign. It is alien. It is not actually made to be, uh, to reflect the needs of this country. The other one is that the program has remained very conservative or traditional or conventional since it was introduced in Africa from Europe at the beginning of the 18th or 17th, 19th century in the case of Kenya. Then it is one of the most mismanaged programs of education, not only in modern Africa, but from the works I've read even elsewhere in the world. People, because it is misunderstood, the management is actually left to dig and top. Now, what is the importance of this program? Now, this refers to the value, purpose, and what have you. Can we just go to the point? Eh? Now, first, the uh, importance of this program has to do with the creation of the culture or the character of the society. If you have poor quality of teacher education program, you will see the things we are going to sh share after this. The second importance is that this is the program when the missionaries came here. They used it to transform the African continent from being a dark continent to what it is today. Now, the next importance is, uh, has to do with preparation, 
and creating a society which is progressive, stable, peaceful, cohesive in modern Africa. And those authorities have established the opposite of this. That's why we have chaos in Africa. Now, the other importance of the program is the creation and the establishment of modern states of Africa. And from this map, you can see that it is this teacher education program that actually gave birth to this political map of Africa and the political map of Kenya. That Kenya is made up of different societies, but because of the influence of teacher education program, we have been brought together as a nation. Now, the other one is preparing and supplying the required skill manpower for development of Africa. Then the number six is preparation and production of the desired leadership. Ideally, teacher education program is an ethical program, and therefore, all the people who have gone through teacher education program and the hands of uh, teachers actually should be wonderful leaders. But is that the case? And uh, we, this also is the one responsible for promoting the quality of education and societies. And then uh, through teacher education program, we are able to globalize or internationalize Africa. So from there, we have the last point is, uh, this is the one that uh, actually for, is used to foster, to foster the, college, uh, the, create, uh, the culture of creativity and innovations that we are expecting in Africa. And unfortunately, Chancellor, this is where we have not done well. Now, these are uh, the examples of the uh, required skill, uh, manpower, skill manpower or professionals. All these people have gone indirectly or directly through teacher education program. They were taught by teachers, and teachers are the products of teacher education program. We have all this. All those, like now, the food we eat is from the, the kitchen, they were taught by people who are taught by teachers. Now, we have also scholars. I think just move very fast because we have no time. We have people like Chinua Achebe, Wole Watselinga, Mandela, Cardinal Otunga, Gugi Wationgo, Sengo, and all. These are the products of teacher education. And there are people who have changed Africa. We have medical doctors. And the chancellor, when some of them become doctors, they turn and begin actually despising uh, teaching profession and teacher education, forgetting that they, they are what they are because of this program. Okay? Then <laughs> we come to three. The mission. This is the many thing that is of interest to us today. So the first thing is, what is the mission? Literally, this is the intended purpose of teacher education. When the missionaries came, for example, in Kenya, the missionaries introduced, established the first teacher training center in Bura, in Taita Tafeta, in 1847. What was their intention? What was the purpose of that teacher training program? And what vision do they have? And what dream do they have about this program? This is what we are going to refer to as the mission of teacher education program in modern Africa and more so in Kenya. Now, this, can, this mission of teacher education program can actually be looked at as being the direct or explicit mission. And then we have the unintended or indirect. So under the direct or intended purpose of teacher education program, the first thing that actually teacher education program was set out for Africa was to prepare school teachers. And it was hoped, they never mentioned it, but it was hoped that through these school teachers, Africa would be transformed. And some of you of, of, who are of my age, when you were in school in the 40s and 50s, the presence of a teacher in the village was actually the pride of that village. Although today, I've been telling my students in this room 
today, actually nobody looks at the teachers. Number two, <laughs> the mission is and was to enlighten, to educate, or evangelize. People always say that the missionaries came to evangelize Africa. They didn't come to evangelize, to give religion. Through this, they were actually giving new ideas which we Africans did not have. The other one is the introduction and sustenance of foreign uh, culture in modern Africa. As you are seated here, some of you actually are black in skin, but in your head, in your minds, actually you are not African. There is very little Africanness left today. Then the other mission, and this is what the missionaries chancellor came to do. They came to make us actually be uprooted from your cultures. Then the other one is preparation and the pro production of collaborators, especially before we got independent. Even today, when you hear politicians going around, <laughs> like now we're having elections in Kenya, those politicians are looking for collaborators, people who can actually work with them. But if you are a person who has a different position, they will not accept you. So this teacher education program, one of the missions was actually to prepare and produce collaborators, supporters of the foreign interests in, uh, in Kenya and Africa, and today to support the people perhaps in, this, uh, in, uh, in power. Now, the indirect or what was not intended. You know, when the missionaries came here, for them it was just to make us to be good Christians. Like for me, I'm a Catholic. What they wanted for me was to make the sign of the cross. The moment you made the sign of the cross, actually they knew you are part and parcel of them. If you didn't make the sign of the cross, Professor Angela is here. We went to, through the same school where religion was number one. And through that religion, uh, we were being uprooted from wherever we came from. So, now, the indirect mission was preparation and production of future leaders in modern Africa. And these were political, spiritual, academic, or opinionated leaders. And when he, this teacher education program was introduced, the Europeans did not expect this. That's why when people like Tom Boyer in Kenya turned out to be very firebrand individuals in Kenya, the missionaries who had actually prepared this person were shocked. They didn't expect to produce this type of characters. So that is one of the indirect things. The second, and you can have, these are the people who went through the teacher education program, the, the first group that was brought by the missionaries and the, uh, the colonial governments. We had people like Nyerere and so on. Continue. Now, the, the other indirect was the creation and the establishment of modern societies. These are states, nations, or countries in Africa through agitation. After these people got education, which was mainly uh, spread around the continent by the teachers, these leaders now began agitating, we want independence. And in Kenya, you are very well familiar, we had Mau Mau and other movements that demanded that Kenya be independent. Now, the other indirect was the creation and the establishment of the modern societies as you can see from the map of Africa. And the problem, as you will see later, those maps, those creation of states, have also generated their own unique problems for this continent. Then uh, replacement of the African indigenous cultures. This was actually the role of teacher education. So that uh, when I went through this, like now, we have some of you sitting in, my, uh, in our midst who are from the Frankfurt area. We, in Anglophone, were actually prepared in the culture that prepared us to behave like the English. While the ones from Frankfurt were prepared to behave like the French, and even the dressing, even the way they talk, and even the way they carry around themselves, actually they were not like the Africans. Then uh, the other one is replaced, sorry, continue. 
you can see these funny things. Eh? <laughs> I think you better show the pictures so that eh, you can see the fact you can see this 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 has to do with security. Bring that lady. You can see this one. This one is not African. And these people are walking in the streets in front of the mothers and so on. And there is going to be another picture where my small girls are actually naked. And when they are walking the streets, they talk of it is my right. <laughs> okay? You can see when the kissing, which is an African. You can see the dressing. You can see that mess. You know, <laughs> funny things. Okay? Now, the other one is preparation and production of skill, manpower. I think we have already looked at this. Where we have teachers, where we have got the scientists, where we have got the uh, writers, and all this. I think we have already looked at this. The teacher education, in fact, it was not teacher education at that time, uh, Chancellor, it was being referred to as teacher training program. The people who pioneered that program were actually from Europe. And they were conducting teacher education program uh, from the perspective of Europe. And this teacher education program was born out of the chaos in Europe. We had European wars, we had had the crusades and so on. So when they now introduced the first teacher education program, which was not for education, this program was actually born out of the uh, technical training institute during industrial revolution in Europe. And that's why emphasis in teacher training program has always and still remains pedagogy. And I've, uh, Chancellor, I've been asked by my colleagues here that we should mount a course called pedagogy for people who are not trained teachers. There is nothing like pedagogy. We train you in uh, education. You cannot talk of pedagogy, which is methods of teaching. You, you taught you use methods of teaching from which background? Because there must be philosophy, there must be psychology, there must be instructional technology. You need to know this. So that uh, when people talk of, you, we, we, you should have a, a, a course in the School of Education on pedagogy for people who are not teachers, I think we better think twice. Now, development and the creation of sophistication in modern Africa through education and globalization. You can see these are sophisticated things. <laughs> we have ships, we have those uh, tall buildings, you know, we have the Kenya Airways, we have now the new uh, railway which has come. This sophistication has been facilitated through teacher education program. Then we have this where we are sending our soldiers <laughs> to go and keep peace out there. Without teacher education, these characters could not have been able to go out there. They are able to use English because they were taught. They are able to understand where they are going because they were taught geography and all this. <laughs> and that's the same thing. Okay? Now, again, sophistication in Africa has been brought through what we call connectivity. And you can see that the, through these modern technologies, the whole world has now become a very small village, the one at the center. So that what we do in Kenya as a nation, there's no way of hiding this from elsewhere. Then uh, the performance of the mission and the chancellor, this is where we need now to keep it pulse. Have we actually done well? The performance of the mission of teacher education program in modern Africa, this simply refers to how far or well the mission or the intended mission of teacher education program has actually performed or has been utilized in the development of modern Africa. Now, this mission of teacher education can now be looked at two. One, fulfillment, which is now the title of my presentation, whether there has been any fulfillment of the intended mission, and other than actually just preparing teachers. Then the unfulfillment of that mission. So we are going to look at the two differently. So manifestations of the fulfillment of the mission of teacher education program in modern Africa and more so in Kenya. First and foremost, fulfillment of this mission is the development and administration 
of formal teaching profession. And without the teachers, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in front of me, you will not be here. There are those who think that when the chancellor, you are a scientist, you have nothing to do with education. There are those ones who think that when you are a medical doctor, you have nothing to do with the education. And I've been a teacher at the university from 1975, when I got to stand before young undergraduates in the University of Nairobi, when it comes to, Chancellor, I hope you help us to overcome this scenario, when you say you are from the School of Education, actually people don't look at you. As far as they're concerned, what is there in education? And yet, it is the backbone, it is the best of what you are. The second manifestation is the preparation and the production of modern, sophisticated, skilled manpower or labor in modern Africa. And this one was recognized by Professor Minde for Kenya way back in 1965. And that's why he recommended that they should expand teacher education program in Kenya. And this was followed up by the late Joseph Karanja when he was uh, vice president of Kenya in 1978. And he urged the Kenyan government to invest more in teacher education program if we have to fast track development in Kenya. Then the other manifestation is the creation and the establishment of modern societies. I think this one is there. Then uh, we have introduction, development, and institutionalization of foreign cultures. Teach education uh, program, uh, chairman of council and the chancellor, actually these have been institutionalized. You go to school, the teacher is speaking English, you go to school, the teacher is dressed like a Westerner, and the children, looking at the teacher being a model, they also do the same. And therefore, the way we behave in this room is a reflection of who taught you. <laughs> <laughs> then, development and establishment of modernization, sophistication of modern Africa through education and globalization process. This is the direct. This is what it was intended, and so on. Then the indicators or manifestations of the unfulfilled mission. And again, you know, you show those pictures here. Now, <laughs> this section is dealing mainly with the, the shortcomings or failures of or unfulfilled mission of teacher education program in modern Africa. First is a culturalization of modern Africa. That is the failure of teacher education program to provide a transition or smooth link between the African past and modern Africa. As you are seated here, some of you even don't understand your African past. You can actually talk very well about the Britain, you can talk very well about France, but where you come from, you may not remember what it is. The second failure is the creation and the establishment of an unstable, chaotic, and progressive strife ridden societies in most, most Africa. So we can now see some of the chaos. Those pictures, huh? Yeah, you can see a culturation in modern Africa. You can see this. This is an African chancellor, totally an African. But when you go to the streets of any town in Kenya and in modern Africa, you will see those. Then, the chaos we have had in Kenya and uh, in Africa, the first attempted coup in Kenya was 1971. Wanjala, you remember when some of our lecturers actually were implicated in this. These are people who are not trained to be tolerant. These are people who are not trained to be understanding. Anything small, Chancellor, they want to jump to very absurd conclusions. You can see I mean overthrowing how ungrateful. The Obote is the one who promoted this character to that position of the army. Then the man turns around being very ungrateful and even the vice chancellor, you have problems. You have promoted some of us here, then we turn around and we want to overthrow you. These are the problems <laughs> that are happening in, in Africa. Okay? Then you can see, no, don't remove. You can see these are the people who are training to be future leaders of Africa. University students. And what are they doing? 
one of them, in fact, you should show one who is holding a very big stone. And that stone is not going to be directed at the VC. The stone is directed at the innocent people who are driving their vehicles along the highway. You know, it's, this is irresponsible behavior. Can you continue? You can see the chaos we have had in Africa. In Kenya, this thing is, is familiar. 1992, 1997, 2007, we have had this chaos. Very mindless, ruthless, brutal, and people who have no understanding of humanity. This is the unfulfilled mission of teacher education. Then we have the creation and sustenance of dependence syndrome. As I talk to you now, I'm sure some of the African leaders are either in Washington, <laughs> Vice Chancellor, in London, or they are in Beijing, actually begging. So you can see some whites are delivering <laughs> food to starving Africans. And yet we have people with PhDs here in agriculture, we have people in the, with the PhDs here in engineering, and yet we have this mess. Okay? Then, the failure to develop and introduce and sustain creativity and innovations for development in modern Africa. Now, this feature is, called, is characterized by actually no creativity. When we talk of the, <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, you know our motto is a flame of knowledge and innovation. And when you look at what we call innovations, there is no originality. In. You have actually just gone, today we have the computers, this thing is here, you can't cut and paste, and then you come here and tell the Vice Chancellor, I've discovered. This is the failure of the teacher education program. We need people who are creative. Someone who goes to bed, he wakes up with Chancellor, and he says, I think this is what I've seen. Now, you can see, we are importing these things. <laughs> 60 years. In 1972 to 1976, I participated in inducting people from the, 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 the Asian Tigers. Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, South Korea. They came here, and India. Look at what they are doing. And we who train them in Kenya, see where we are. They are moving towards the first world, and Kenya is moving in a greatless <laughs> position in development. Honestly, have we benefited from teacher education program? Then the challenges. <laughs> what we are, <laughs> Chancellor, these are now where we need to focus, as a nation and as a continent. These are normally the emerging issues and associated problems with the mission of teacher education. Now the first one <laughs> is the design and development, the design, development, and administration of teacher education program in most, Afri in most African countries. This is not efficiently done. Look at Kenya. And again, as a scholar, I need to be very honest. A curriculum is being developed in Kenya. Who has actually been invited? It's a question of looking for friends, the people with whom you can come and share things with, and you say we are producing a curriculum. Professor Tunga is a specialist in the curriculum. The curriculum is meant for the society, who has been involved in developing, designing, and actually rolling out the, the curriculum. And then you don't allow people actually to comment on it. Because when you comment, you become an enemy. That's a problem. And I think as a continent, we need to... Uh, need then uh, the other one is the present poor concept and perception of the problem of the teacher education in uh, Africa. According to Africa, the concept of teacher education has remained dogmatic, teacher training. And the teachers are just trained to stand before the children and actually repeat what the curriculum developers have said. The other one is the ambiguous or amorphous or unclear or no no policy framework to govern teacher education program in modern Africa and more so in Kenya. Is, I've been a teacher trainer in this country from 1971. <laughs> there, there is no policy. Ministers come in and they say, 
we want to train teachers for a chancellor for two years. And you don't have point of reference. Now we have a mess. And this is why I wanted the chancellor to have the Minister of Education to come and share with us here. The Minister of Education, Chancellor, admitted students to a Bachelor of Education degree. Because according to the Minister of Education, these people were qualified. Then an appendix of the Minister of Education turns around and says, these people are not qualified. So, this contradiction does not help the mission of teach education program. The other one is the limited or lack of expertise. Look at the people who are training teachers in this country, <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor. Most of the people who are training teachers in this country are subject specialists. People who are trained to teach English, people who are trained to teach mathematics, people, those people are not teacher educators. What do they know in teacher education program? This is the problem of Africa. We need to train specialists in teacher education to come and they train people who are going to promote the development agenda of Africa. But when we continue having subject specialists, and they also stand there and say, we are teacher educators, and sometimes I look at them and just laugh. Number three, number four, little or lack of facilitation. <laughs> this year, there was funds allocation for programs in education. There was money for primary, money for secondary, and a lot of money for technical and vocational education. There was no allocation for the training of teachers. They expect the Professor Akenga of the University of Eldoret to put up structures, to buy modern technologies, to do everything. As if she's the one who is going to directly benefit from teacher education program. So this is the challenge we have. The second challenge has to do with the working or operational environment. Again, this is, these are conditions are very unbecoming for producing teachers who can add value to modern Africa. First is lack or absence of relevant structures and instruments of administering teacher education program in this country and the, the whole of Africa. There are no policy framework to be followed. We have never established a directorate of a teacher education program in Kenya. But we have directors, <laughs> Madam Chancellor, for primary. We have directors for secondary and we have directors for technical and vocational education, and there has never been a director of teacher education. The other uh, challenge is poor or unsuitable or unavailable required educational facilities and resources for conducting the teacher education program in modern Africa or so in Kenya. Look at it. This is a, a, teacher, tr a, a teacher education, teacher preparation class Chancellor, we are now preparing the teachers who are going to pr pr produce this professional. Look at my poor teacher. He's actually built against the wall. <laughs> and yet, teacher preparation program is skill intensive. That's why in Europe, and more so increasingly now in the US, the cl classes for teacher trainees have been reduced between 10 and the 20. So that the these people can be prepared to become creative, to become innovative. Look at it. This is supposed to be a staff room where the lecturers at the university in the School of Education are supposed to be actually preparing to train teachers for Kenya or any other part of Africa. Look at this. And then the children we are training actually come to the staff room. Just go back. The children you are training come to the classroom and they see this. And then you expect them to transform outside there. May God help us. <laughs> this is a, supposed to be an office of a head of the department in a tech department. But the Let's look at it. How, Chancellor, how do we expect Africa to compete with the other countries? In fact, if you you went to the office of this head of department and you asked for a document, Professor Kenga, the person we don't do it. 
but then we are training the teachers who are supposed to be organized and focused. Well, and the, the, the head of the department himself actually has nothing to organize. <laughs> now, <laughs> we go to, to school system. By the way, to be very honest, I must tell you, this was taken in Kenya. Children are learning under a cave. Chancellor, <laughs> and we want us, madam, actually to say that we are producing people who can compete with others in the world. Where? <laughs> we have problems in Africa. Look at the structure. This, is, this was taken in Kenya. In Kenya. Some of you are familiar with this. In the 21st century, these structures are in Kenya. And then you turn around and you say that a student who has been in Nairobi Primary School has gotten an A, and the child who has gone through this mess has gotten a Z. Where? <laughs> Which comparison? We have chaos. Next is lack of goodwill or support from the stakeholders in teacher education and the, the, the well wishers as well. This is not there. <laughs> you can see even the allocation of funds. It's not there. I'm ha happy, Professor Kenga. This is the first university judge in East Africa to have what is called education building. The first one. Go to Kenyatta University. The School of Education was established in barracks. In fact, when you go there, when we went there for the first time in 1978, you didn't know where to sit. That place. <laughs> now, the other one is uh, insufficient or inadequate or unpredictable investments. Funds are unreliable. And the madam, I've been, uh, Professor Akenga, I've always been at you asking, can I have more lecturers? Then you tell me, where do I get the money? And yet, just to continue, you know we are here to share. That's why I'm here to share with you. We have problems. Money is not a problem in Africa. Money is not a problem. You look at the reports, even today's paper, look at it. Money is being swindled, left and right. If we really value teacher education as a, a catalyst for development, some of this money which is looted actually should be put here. That is how the tigers of Asia actually are where they are. They prioritized where it goes. So that we don't have to put our vice chancellors and the principals of teacher training institutions in a tight corner trying to look for money which they cannot raise. Then we turn around and begin saying, Akenga is a problem. Akenga is not a problem. Akenga is just a victim. The problems she's going through are elsewhere. But then let us, let us continue. You know, I'm, I'm finishing that point. Expertise is not there. Look at the people in the Ministry of Education. And those also are in charge of teacher education program. Some of them, like in some countries in Africa, they pick soldiers. They pick soldiers to be ministers for education. <laughs> That's all. In Kenya, when we were the destination in education, between 1964 and around 1982, the minister for, for education, the late Otiende, was an educationist. The permanent secretary, the late Njoroge, was an educationist. And the, prof the professor, Bahaika, that is when Kenya was clicking in education. It is the one that produced these people. After that, we have been getting retired soldiers, Minister of Education. We are getting what and what? Minister of Education. Where do you expect to get audit? Then we have the problem of technical, logistical support, and all this. Next. Then the curriculum clash is another challenge. Or the differences. Now, this refers to a mix-up of the foreign culture. Teacher education program is the one supposed to be to initiate. Teacher education program is the one that is supposed to develop, and teacher education program is the one that is supposed to administer the culture of Kenya. So that when we talk of the Kenyan culture, the people who should actually be in the forefront in doing this should be the teacher educators. But when you have Professor Vahika, my chancellor, Psychophants. In fact, today I'm using a very strong term when I'm talking to my colleagues. 
people who are actually uh, not supposed to be training teachers. We have criminals in the schools of education in Africa. People have murdered. We have looters in the school of education that are training teachers. Kafuha may have been a principal of a school around here, uh, Chancellor. Uh, people know I looted money from this school. And then I'm, I find, they find me training teachers here with respect. <laughs> then uh, this has resulted in the difficulty in the conceptualization and perception of the program. Number two, the nature and the scope of the teacher education program in most Africa has remained foreign. If you look at our curriculum and you go to continental Europe, what we are handling here is actually what is being handled. Then uh, number three, the difficulty related to the design and development of the relevant mission. Who will do it? When you have subject teachers actually masquerading as teacher trainers, do they understand what the mission is? Number four, emerging issues is another challenge that we have. And these are those developments in education and in African society. First, we have the idea of, you mentioned about it, the Chancellor, yesterday. It is expansion and planned expansion and massification or explosion in education. Now, when this happens, Chancellor, we need more teachers. And then, teacher training and Professor Kenga, as we talk now, I don't know how many students you have been given for the School of Education. And the, the School of Education and Faculties of Education, uh, Chancellor, have been found to be the dumping place. You know, there are those people who actually get the so-called S. Those are go for medicine, go for what? And at the end of the day, the leftovers are the ones who are dumped in the Faculty of Education. And the Wanjana, you are here with me, you can uh, actually affirm this. When you went to Makerere, the people who are admitted in the faculty of education were actually the best performers. Because the philosophy was you need very bright people in order to go and teach. Okay? But today, we don't know who is bright. For after 1969, all the grades we have are stolen. You remember, the first time exams were cancelled in this country, actually it was 1969. Even last year, 2015, we were not supposed to get anybody coming to university. It was often secret that those grades actually had been stolen, but some of them are sitting here. <laughs> so, we have problems. We move to another one. Technological advancements are actually problems. <laughs> some of these technologies are not homegrown. They don't come from here, Chancellor. They are made out here, and those people look for commercial market, and they come and dump them here. Now, the other one is increased sophistication in the African society. Relatively. We are not really sophisticated. Relatively <laughs> sophisticated. This actually creates a complication. Then the other one is technologization of or technologization in education. We are now using computer. And I was joking yesterday with one of my colleagues who was sitting in this room with Zikama. Technologization is not the same as Professor Kenga with ICT. The people sitting here, they think that ICT is technologization of education. It is not. So we need to find out what technologies are appropriate for this continent. Now, these are the things we need. Technologization of education through information technology. Not information and communication technology. In ICT is a tool. Information technology is the process. Now we have the emerging perspectives and dimensions in administration of education. Today, ladies and gentlemen and Professor Akenga, <laughs> you need to support us in this. And I think you will benefit. Teaching practice in many countries, especially in Europe, people don't go out. All you need is to get a, a, a central a new board and then the students on teaching practice are hooked on it. And you supervise your students actually from a given point at the university. We have this uh, conducting lectures. Like now here, we have very many students. A, a lecturer moving from one classroom to another 
is actually tiring. And some of these lecturers sitting here, Professor Kenga, are burned out. So when you see some of them are talking and they don't answer you, don't think they are rude. Actually, they are overwhelmed. Okay? <laughs> okay? Don't, don't remove. Don't remove. Then, maintaining student record. And I think, uh, Chancellor, we have made some headway through ARP. I think this is helping us. That is trying to uh, produce technology in those. Next, globalization. This is the, something which is there. <laughs> this is the idea of sharing information and so on. And I think as Africans, we need to embrace this. Then the other challenge, uh, we look now at the contributions of the mission. Again, now, what has this contributed? We have the positive and negative contribution. So can we go to the positive uh, as I come almost to the end? Now, the positive contribution of the mission of teacher education program in modern Africa is development and establishment of formal teaching profession. I think I've mentioned this one. Next is development and the creation of modern societies in Africa. I think we have talked about this. Then initiation, creation, and sustenance of distinct, unique African culture. I think because of this, uh, we are trying to have uh, a going between culture, between foreign and African. Then development and the production of modern African leaders, political, spiritual, academic, and so on. I think this is a, a very positive contribution of the mission of teacher education. Now we have preparation and production of skill manpower. All of you sitting here, you have been trained by teachers, whether directly or indirectly. Then development and promotion of creativity and innovation, especially literary works. Look at people like Chris Wanjala, look at people like uh, Nguki Wationgo, they have done very well. Where we have not done well, Professor Kenga, is in the sciences. And I think the reason why we have not done very well in the sciences from the educational point of view is that you don't go with we don't have to go by laws which were not developed in Africa. You don't you then to go by the processes, Professor Kenga, which were not developed in Africa. And therefore what you are doing is reproducing what other people have done before you. Now the other one <laughs> is globalization and internationalization of modern Africa. Because uh, through teacher education program, we have produced you people who are able to travel out there, who are able to use a computer, who are able to actually read other people's work, and therefore you become globalized. Now, these are some of the people who are modern leaders. I think we have seen this. You can see it. I, I think you can see this one. You know this one? All of you sitting here? If you are a patriot, if you are patriotic in Kenya, who is this one? <laughs> Okay? So, can we... Now, this is a, another positive contribution. You can see a teacher. Okay? Now, so these are scholars. I think just we have already talked about this. Continue. We have those doctors. Just continue. I think all these are the professionals. Who, who, who are the products? That thing. What is the title? It seems to have. Anyway, this is a continuation of the professionals. Sophistication in modern Africa, you can see. <laughs> Unfortunately, Chancellor, this sophistication we have is not ours. We have just gone to collect and bring here, like the, the train, uh, which was going. In 1949, China was a very primitive society. Why are they producing these trains? And Africa. When the Europeans came here in 18 something, actually they find us more sophisticated. You can see all this. Continue. Now, the negative contributions of the mission of teacher education program is that the failure to provide what I, I mentioned earlier, the smooth link or transition between the African past, which is Africanness, and the modern Africa, foreign <laughs> culture. That is the serious one. And the, most of these people, uh, chancellor, who have this sort of orientation in point one, first of all, they don't understand themselves. Even as we are seated here, we have some people who do not understand themselves whether they are Africans or not. For them, 
Actually, they think they should be in Europe, but not here. Then we have creation of unstable or non-progressive, chaotic and strife-ridden societies. And I think you can see them. You can see. This is a military coup in Uganda. Amin has taken over, and you can see how he's towering on this. And I need to explain this. Why we have had coups and counter-coups in Africa. The teachers, no, don't take away. The teachers who taught these characters, Chancellor, were brutal. You know they were trained by people who are not teachers, missionaries, and decommissioned army uh, officers. So they were handling teachers in a very brutal manner. When these people qualified Chancellor and got in the position of power, they were now trying to replay what was in the classroom. So they are now telling the people they are supposed to lead that you did this to us, we can also do to you. Unfortunately, for them, they use the gun and uh, the pancakes to actually tell you, you are brutal to me when I was sitting in front of you. I can also be brutal to you because I'm now a power. This is one. The other one, you can see, this is in Kenya, Kariza. You remember Al Shabab went there. The, 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 just the, the appearance of these people in those cartilages make some of us actually to break down. And I'm sure this poor character, when he was faced with those soldiers, he, he did what he was saying. Now, the other one is failure to foster the culture of creativity. I think we have talked about this. Continue. Continue. We have seen all this. Now, creation and establishment of elitism. Madam Chancellor, this is the disaster for this continent and especially in Kenya. This is a group of individuals who are usually very arrogant. I went to St. Mary's Yala and therefore I can only talk to people who went to St. Mary's Yala. I went through Makerere, therefore the only people I recognize are Makerereans. You remember this? Now, these are self-seeking individuals. They, when they appear here, Professor Kenga, they want everybody to stand up and salute. <laughs> these are people who are actually uh, mindless. They don't care whether... They, these are people you'll find in Kenya here. Actually, they have more than they can eat. But the next door, we have people who are going hungry, cancer. But the food which remains, actually, they give to the dogs but not the friend across the fence. You can see. <laughs> this is structure in Kenya. And you are not supposed to move near this. At the entrance, at the gate, we have really think first person. Next. You can see these are exclusive facilities for elites only in Kenya. <laughs> You have seen this. Golf player. Unless you are a member, and to be a member, you must be an elite. You cannot be found here. If you are found here, you will go here. You can see the facilities. And this is what we call modern Africa. And this, that, that we, don't remove. Madam, you are familiar with this. You come from Nairobi. You have seen Umbuakani. So, Kafu. And other people, Professor Kenga, who are not intended to go there, if you go there, you, are, you go there at your own peril. <laughs> development and persistent underdevelopment that has resulted in continued poverty, strives, chaos, diseases, and ignorance. Continue. Then it is poverty. These are things the teacher education program, Madam Chancellor, has failed Africa. Look at these children. At this children. And we have to wait for people, Madam Chancellor, to come from Europe, from China, to come and feed these children. And yet we have people here with the degrees. If they opened their papers here, Madam Chancellor, you will go through the window. But look at this. Look at this. This is in Kenya. We have no water, Professor Kenya. Teacher education has failed us. Look at this. 
21st century, look at the happy <laughs> habitat for people. <laughs> look, this is the most decent house you can get in, <laughs> in the village. Most important, Professor Kerry. What is most important? Look at this. And yet, 21st century. <laughs> this is the most advanced method of farming in, in Africa. It is a really advanced. And when you are uh, escorting these animals on your farm, everybody in the village actually stands. Look at the story, food story facilities, what we call granary. Teach education has failed in this continent. Look at these children <laughs> that are having their classes. Now, development and creation of the existing dependent center, I think we have seen this, where we depend on foreigners. We have failure to foster the culture of creativity. I think we have talked about this. Then uh, my proposals, my proposals, what now I want to share with you and what I think are my suggestions. One, there is a need to improve efficiency in the development and administration of teacher education program by harnessing professionalization. Let us have people who are well trained the way the Tigers of Asia did. When they left Nairobi in 1976, the first focus was how to promote quality in teacher education. My late lecturer, Professor Lucas in Makere, used to say that if you want to transform any society, produce first class quality school teachers, and you'll get what you have. And that is what the, the Tigers of Asia did. Number two, there is a need also to have very clear policy framework to actually manage, administer teaching. Then the third one is we need to have uh, some structures like directorates of teacher education and relevant professional bodies that uh, actually reflect the importance of teacher education program in modern Africa. Then the other proposal is establishment and use of collaborative strategies in administration of teacher education program so that we can share experiences with other countries, with other nations, with other regions that are doing the same. Then we need to conduct teacher education program according to the established national and international standards for quality assurance and efficient management systems of the program. Today, there, you know, Professor Genge, there is a study which was done last year. I don't know whether the, the lady who did it is here. She actually went out to find out who are the deans of schools of education. If you look at that study, then we say Kenya is a big job. Of all the deans, that she included in her sample. None of them was a teacher educator. And then you turn around and say, <laughs> Professor King, when I'm presenting my students here on graduation, I say we have the best teachers we are giving Kenya. Are we serious? Now, <laughs> what do we need, Professor Kenya and the Chancellor? If you want to produce the teacher that can make a change to Kenya, we need this. This is Stratmore University in Kenya. My colleagues who are training teachers in this university, Professor Kenya, if you, we were able, Chancellor, to get this, we shall give you the teacher you want to transform Kenya. Not the one where the teacher is squeezed against the wall. The other facilities, these are for interactive <laughs> learning, interactive teaching. If African countries are serious, we need these facilities. Chancellor, you can see the best. We need heavy investment in administration of teacher education program, and this will go a long way to actually enable us to get the facilities and the resources we want. If 
we have the problem, and uh, sometimes, you know, Chancellor, we, you only come to see what we have done. We sit with this lady when we are now trying to look for, to prepare the budget. She's here. So I want to produce the teacher Kenyan society wants. But does she have the capacity? The other one is harmonization of teacher education programs for training teachers. This one, we need one to design, develop, and administer teacher education programs that is integrated in the structure of the overall development agenda of Kenya. And the uh, Chancellor, this was done in Kenya up to 1982. Professor Indire, when he was the dean, School of Edu Faculty of Education in the University of Nairobi, he was the major consultant for the Kenyan government when he, they were now thinking of what should be done. This also implies, ladies and gentlemen, that when we want to reform education, the majority of the people who should actually be involved should be chancellor. When you are with your fellow chancellors, this is what you need to tell them. If you have to make any difference, the teacher educators should actually be at the center. Because these are the people creating the society. These are the people actually creating the culture of this country and other African countries. The teacher education program should not be managed in isolation of other programs of education like it is now. You find we talk of primary, and yet the people who are sustaining primary are teachers. We talk of secondary, and yet the people who are sustaining <laughs> the secondary school education sector are teachers. We talk of technical and vocational education, and yet the people sustaining that are the teachers. So we need to do that. Then there is need to develop and introduce programs in teacher education uh, program that focus on preparation of teacher educators and this. Kenyatta University, those who were in Kenyatta University a few years ago, they half-heartedly, that is, half-heartedly introduced a master of education, primary teacher education, they introduced half-heartedly a master of education, secondary school education, teacher education. Chancellor, there's no such a thing. A teacher educator is a teacher educator. Now, we need to institute reforms in teacher education program. This is, again, what is required. Now, the present curriculum of teacher education program in modern Africa and more so in Kenya is very conservative, very traditional, and outdated. Just look at the, what we are using. We are talking of methodology. Is that what the teacher is supposed to be equipped with? Therefore, there is a need for us as a, a nation and as a continent to customize the curriculum of teacher education program to the emerging issues and so on. Then we need to broaden the teacher education program. Next. We need to, to extend, to increase the duration of preparing teachers. I remember when 844 was introduced in Kenya in the mid-80s. President Moi wanted us to train teachers for five or six years. Professor Kenga. That's what we were told. But people who are very conservative rejected. Now we are producing teachers who are not actually. And Professor Tuitoek, 1996, correctly said we are producing half back graduates. Then we have, we should publicize teacher education program. Many people don't know what a teacher education program is. That's why I was talking of can we demystify this? Then the other suggestion, proposal is promotion of quality of teacher education program or in teacher education program. We need to review the teacher education program and this should be professionally done. Next, we need to develop and supply relevant educational facilities and resources like the one you have seen uh, uh, concerning Stratum University and another university in Southern Africa. Then we need to professionalize the management of teacher education program and the Vice Chancellor, uh, who, are, who is here, when you are in the Vice Chancellor's Committee, this is what you need to address. If you want to have a very stable society in Africa, can we have the training of teachers actually be conducted by people who are specialists 
in teacher preparation right from the Ministry of Education down to teacher training institution. Then we need to conduct regular research in the uh, education in general and teacher education program. Then we need to administer teacher education program according to the nationally and internationally established standard so that we don't create conflicts or contradiction. Then we need to establish specific national institutions for administ administering teacher education program. This should cover those teacher training institutions that are for preschool teachers, not where we have even in the Professor Kengati University, we have EPE here, and these people are mixed with the people who are going to teach at secondary school. In India, Canada, Australia, and so on, there is just teacher training institutions specializing in that. Then uh, secondary, technical, and vocational education, and then uh, those who are going to teach at the university, and so on. Globalization, again, we have talked about this. We need this to pool resources. We need this to promote the quality of teacher education, and we need globalization to facilitate general development in modern Africa. We need also globalization for the purpose of facilitating the adaptation to and adoption of new developments in education and teacher education for development in Africa. Then we need to promote the culture of fostering creativity and innovations in education in general and the teacher education in particular for development in modern Africa. Conclusion. And now you can measure me whether I've done it, Professor Kenga, or I've not done it. Conclusion. The many conclusions to be drawn from what I've shared with you is that the concept and perception of teacher education program in modern Africa are not, and I'm using plural, so that although the mission is tied to teacher education, there are two different concepts, are not clear. That is, these concepts are being construed in Africa. Number two, in this presentation, I've observed that teacher education program is not professionally managed despite it is being a critical component of the development agenda in modern Africa and more so in Kenya. The other thing is that the teacher education program and its mission is currently misplaced, misconstrued, misunderstood, and underutilized in the development agenda of modern Africa. And then the management of teacher education program is actually both. This is what I have been emphasizing, is both skill intensive and resource intensive operation. Hence the need for heavy investment and professionalization of the program in modern Africa and more so in Kenya. Then number five, the organization and administration of the mission of teacher education program in modern Africa has failed as demonstrated by the creation of class societies, uh, the prevailing chaos in the continent and in Kenya, which we have witnessed chaos from 1975 and so on. And then the sixth conclusion is that there is urgent need to conduct research-based and professional-based reforms in the development and administration of teacher education program in modern Africa if it has to play its rightful role as an agent of sustainable development in modern Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to rest my presentation there, and you can see I've concluded this. Paul, if I've tired. Will you agree with me that we have been treated to what it was or what it is? So I want now to start with the chairman of council, just make some reactions, and then the chancellor, and then clarifications will follow. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Obviously, a very, well, yeah, intriguing uh, uh, lecture, which will um, obviously um, generate so many more discussions 
for a long time after today. And uh, I believe that this should even ultimately be translated into a book so that future generations can really sever the ideas our dear professor is sharing with us. Yes, the Chancellor is showing me that already is a book, so, um, but um, I believe that, um, I mean, the publisher and so forth, all those details will be, of course, provided. So, um, um, well, on behalf of my um, fellow um, council members, I want to say that we are delighted to have been invited for this inaugural uh, lecture that has been planned for quite some time. Uh, we wondered what role must we play, but I can say without doubt that our role is really that of standing at the sideline as our athletes are winning. Our role is to cheer them. So I think that is the same analogy that I want to give, that our role really is to listen to the professor and cheer the professor and those other professors here that will be making similar, uh, giving similar lectures in the future. It's really wonderful. Uh, our role as the council really is, is strategic, strategic. Our role is not management of the, uh, of the institution. So again, we are very delighted. Obviously, we are also very interested in this uh, lecture. I have keenly uh, taken note of the um, six recommendations actually and with the council we'll actually be looking at the proposals and seeing how do we translate them into actions as we all know there is what we call knowledge translation all these uh, ideas that we come up with as researchers ultimately we need to translate them into actions that will improve society so really we are very delighted to be here. The day really is not for the chairman of council. The day is not for the council members. Uh, you will even allow me not to introduce them. The day really is for the university. And really we are delighted. And our delight is that we want the University of Eldoret to shine, not just in Kenya, but internationally. And, de and indeed, we are reaching there. This is a very unique university which is very well matched with the vision of our vision 2030 as we know the motto is um, is the flame is there so what are the other words the flame of knowledge not just knowledge but an innovation it's a science based university it's an agriculture based university that is what our uh, wise leaders planners have envisioned that by 2030 we Kenyans should be like the Asian Tigers. I think it's a dream that is actually uh, realizable and we are right on course. So really without much ado, I really want to end there and say that as a council, we are very delighted. Let us keep on. Let that flame of knowledge and innovation just continue and continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof, congratulations. To the family, the family of Professor Patrick Akleus. Actually, I don't know why you are calling him Akleus. I think he's Akleus. Uh, who have all along supported him. I would like to thank you very much. As we congratulate him, we are also congratulating you. Job well done.
Before I give my comments, kindly, Vice Chancellor, Council, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to us to do something very different. I would like us to give a standing ovation to Professor Kath and really give a clap to a great scholar. Can we have the real, real, real African way of appreciating our son and scholar? Let's start warming our hands. Natutafanya kama mvua ya the African rain. And I'm asking the ladies, that ululating should come when I tell you to do it. Okay, let's start. The rain will come slowly. Stop. Then comes. You are new people too. Alafi inanza kunyesha kidogo. Stop kidogo. Then inaendelea. Then asgeza. And then go. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lynette. Thank you. This is my second inaugural lecture to attend at University of Eldred. The last one was given by Professor Miriam Kenya. And it was wonderful. Today's is different. And it is different because Professor Kafu seems to be fired up. He seems to be wanting to run. And at his age, I am not sure where he's running to. <laughs> but I am convinced that Professor has a brilliant mind. I actually think the way you presented this inaugural lecture is very different. When I looked at the title of this topic, I said, what is all this? There are so many unfulfilled dreams in Africa. So what will be different when I sit there? And it is the connections that he made that really showed scholarship. I would like to commend you, Prof, for that fire in you for the way you present your thoughts, for the way you are critical, analytical, but with a real solid academic mind. I really would like to comment you. The second thing that came to my mind is in 2005, I was privileged to be invited to listen to late Professor Mazurui in New York, and he talked about African triple heritage. And listening to Professor, I disagree with him, because if he's actually a product of this system that he has completely dismantled, what help and what hope does Africa have? So Prof, Will you allow me to disagree with you? Yes, because Africa has some of the most brilliant scholars who went through education, who had all these contradictions of what you call acculturation, who were taught maybe by the same missionaries who went and sat in those shady places that you showed us and yet they are the best in the world. So the classroom where you are sitting, let me tell you, Prof, doesn't mean that you are a fool, doesn't mean that you wouldn't make it in life, and most importantly, it is really the drive in you. So as I disagree with you, I also want to give a ray of hope to really what Africa holds. Number three, Prof, you talked about the mission of teacher education. And I would like to ask you now a question. Was the mission noble? Was it informed by solid tenets of humanity? Because really, if you have a mission, but somehow 
you don't know how to deliver that mission. But it is a mission born out of goodness. Maybe it will bear something. And throughout, I kept on looking at it and saying, okay, there was a mission. This mission, please help us. Because somehow, it transcends those who were the initiators and those of us today who are implementing the mission. So please, give us that bridge. And as somebody said yesterday, don't cross the bridge and carry it away with you. Because we want to cross. I thank you very much. I would like to say a few more things, but really, let me allow others also to contribute. Thank you. Uh, we would now like to move quickly to the next uh, session, presentation of gifts. And we shall begin with the family, and then department, and the university. The family, please. is my nephew and his, his aunt and on behalf of his friends and other relatives we are, our president is at home we shall give him to go back home thank you I want to thank, first of all, the Chancellor, Ambassador, Professor Bahemuka, taking your time to come here and be with us. Thank you very much. And I want to request the audience, after some time, we'll be giving a clap of appreciation to this, and I'll tell you how to do it. Next, I want to appreciate the Chair of Council, Dr. David Ojaka, and the members of Council. You've been with us here since uh, Tuesday and you're still with us here, and we really want to appreciate you being with us. And I also want to thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor Akenga, and the members of UMB, because without them, with their guidance and support, this uh, occasion wouldn't have taken place. So, you're just going to give one sharp clap for this group of people, and I'll tell them give, and they receive. And when you receive, you receive in this way. So everybody give. Thank you. Next, I want to thank uh, the Committee of Professors and the Organizing Committee for bringing this inaugural lecture to fruition. If they had not met, met many times, decided to make some uh, uh, adjustments here and there, we wouldn't be sitting here. So Committee of uh, Professors, thank you very much. And we give them also, thank you. And the family, especially to Mrs. Grace Kafu, and the immediate family, the extended family, for supporting our professor. Without your support, he wouldn't be here. Thank you very much for taking care of him. And up to this point, where professor has now capped the, his career with this inaugural lecture, I believe he'll go home when he retires finally, feeling that actually he's fulfilled. So let us give this family two claps. One, and you receive another one. Thank you. Next, the deans, directors, heads of departments, and also heads of units in the university. I know you've uh, spent some time given some uh, advice to the committee of deans, and even just for coming here, we want to thank you for that. The academic staff who are here, we thank you for taking your time off to come and listen to this uh, 
inaugural lecture. I know there are many more who would have loved to be here, but they are committed elsewhere. But we thank you for taking your time to come here. And we also want to thank the invited guests from various institutions. I want to make special mention of Mr. Ezekiel Tumbo, who is representing the Secretary, TSC. He's come from the headquarters. Maybe you can just stand and wave so that we can recognize him. Thank you very much. I also want to thank Dr. Otango, who is representing the Vice Chancellor of Great Lakes University, Kisumu. Onyango. Onyango, thank you. Thank you. We also want to re recognize quite a number of members of staff from Moy University. Just wave wherever you are. Uh, quite a number, thank you. From Daystar University, just wave. Maybe the person left. From Catholic University of Eastern Africa. From Kibabi University, thank you. From Bungoma Teachers College, thank you. That's the principal of Bungoma Teachers College, Mr. John Mkalule. From Elgon View College, thank you. From Kericho, I've not told you to clap yet. From Kericho Teachers Training College, from Mosorio Teachers Training College, from Alfax College, thank you. From Kisiwa Teachers Training Institute, and from KIMT. And a clap to all those people. One, thank you. And I also want to recognize the support staff who've been doing a lot of behind the scenes work. Special mention I want to give to those from the Central Services Unit, from the Catering Unit, and from the Security Unit. I know there are many others, but I really want to give special thanks to these, these uh, group because I know the amount of work that they have done. So to this group of people, one, thank you. And also to anybody else, the students, any other from other universities, from other institutions, and members of the public who took their time to come and listen, and all those who attended who have not mentioned. Let us give them a hearty clap. One, and last but not least, to our, uh, my final appreciation is to the presenter of today, that is Professor Kafu. Thank you very much for that very invigorating and, and uh, informative inform, uh, le inaugural lecture. I know there are many issues that have raised up in people's minds, and I'm believing after you've eaten lunch, you'll be able to address some of those. So let us give a final two claps to our presenter. One, and another one. Thank you very much. Let me call upon uh, Professor Ngetich to pray for us. Almighty and everlasting Father, this afternoon we are so grateful for what has happened. We thank you for what we have heard. And Lord, we are praying that what we have heard shall transform us, that this nation and the entire continent of Africa shall change for the way that you have ordained it to be. We ask, O oh God, that you bless us, even as we leave, O oh God, for lunch. Continue, Lord, to inspire us even to greater heights in this institution and other institutions in the nation of Kenya. We thank you and we worship you. As we ask, O oh Lord, for journey masses, for those who are going back to our various uh, places they have come from, Lord, be glorified in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.